I've got the horn knocks done. Uh, they're not polished up yet and the final fitting's not done because I blend them in to suit how the string sits on the actual bow. One of my pet hates though is where people cut cut a groove for the string to sit in because what they what they miss out on is the fact that the string moves as the bow is drawn. I'll try and demonstrate what I mean. When a bow is braced the string sits at an angle about like that but as the bow is drawn the string swings like that till it's almost at 90 degrees to the tips. So you can see it moves through an arc like that. Now if you just cut a straight groove like that, at that angle, which is what a lot of people do, then as the string comes up it will be clicking over the edge of the groove. As the string comes up it will be going click, click, click over the edge of the groove and chafing. Now it might not do any harm and it probably won't on a bottom limb if you've got a bowyer's knot because it will probably just help it grip. But you can see here where I've just rough finished it I've got a series of fine grooves and as the string moves over those you'll actually feel and hear it go click, click. So on the final finished knock that's all got to be a nice smooth blended arc if you like. Uh, or not if you don't want to. I mean that's just my opinion it's just how I do it. In fact you don't actually need any groove on the side at all. All the force on the string is in this direction and in that direction, you know, trying to slide the string down the bow. So it's like on a, on a primitive style you'll have a knock overlay just on the back face of the bow and you can have the side perfectly smooth and make it as narrow as you like. There's, there's no point in having extra width coming like coming up towards us, it's not doing anything. Anyhow, enough about knocks. I'll slap it back up on the tiller and we'll see how it looks. I'll show you what that looks like when it's all polished up eventually. Right, I've got the horn knocks on now. I've substantially rounded off the corners, tapered the tips, all the rest of it. You can see just like that, there's, there's a bigger distance there than here. So the lower limb is a bit stiff, a little bit stiffer than I'd like. You know, you expect the lower limb to be a little on the stiff side due to the asymmetry of her bow. There's 30. Yeah, you see that right limb's It's looking pretty good now. That lower lower limb's stiff in the middle, but that's looking very nice now. Yeah, I just do a little bit, little bit on that lower limb, little bit here. It's where this node is. She's a bit thick there, a bit stiff there. A little bit more work there, then we'll be good to go. Just taking a bit off here, a few strokes of the last rounding the belly a bit more, chamfering this corner of the bamboo as well, just taking off the sharp corners, rounding it all slightly. Uh, we'll have another look. Once I've got the tiller how I want it, I'll probably still be short to a 28 inch draw, but then it won't take much to get it back the rest of the way. A little bit off the width, round the corners a bit more, but let's get it Let's get the tiller right first. Try and get out the camera shot. There we are, she's looking very pretty. That left tip's still looking a bit... I don't know if it's because I'm sitting over this angle. Left tip looks a bit stiff. There's, there's our 35. So 35 at oh, 23. Get some exercise. Yeah, I think I can let the, oh, the tips are moving. Yeah, if you look at that outer left tip, it does straighten us a, a little bit. 
Yeah. I think we just this little mark there that catches the eye. In fact, I can feel it. It's slim. Just it bulges fat there. Just a little bit fat there, and it it's quite deep there. What I tend to do is go a little bit narrow and deep at the tips. It's saving weight. A bit like those um, Malaga bet bows where they're wide and thin in the middle. Then they go to a a narrow but deep, a narrow but thick outer limb like a lever. But yeah, that's that's coming on. I'll let you see how much I've I've narrowed the tips compared to how they were. They can, they can come in a bit more, get them a bit more graceful. So it looks like there's a little bit of twist on that one. I don't know, I've got to, got to try and check the whole bow's not trying to go sideways. So it gives the eye, it gives the, to me it looks a bit as if the, you know, the, the back of the bow's sloping here. So it implies it will be twisting and bending towards this weak side. So perhaps I need more off this edge. It's the sort of thing you have to watch out for, especially as you go to a lower weight bow, and if you try and go too narrow, especially with flight bows and stuff like that, it can suddenly all start trying to go sideways and turn itself inside out. Yeah, a little bit of careful work. If I'm taking thickness off, I'll take it off this edge. But it's easy to get an optical illusion, just a bit of undulation here or the crown of the um, the node or something like that can make it look odd. Yeah, it does feel a bit feels a bit blockier this edge. So I'll round some of that off. Oh, perhaps I won't go I won't go narrow, I'll perhaps go a bit flatter, get it coming back, try and avoid it going sideways. Attention to detail, fiddling and fettling. Yeah, I've just done a tiny bit more easing off what seemed to be a bit stiff there. Now we're in a, the tips a little. I've marked the centre and the arrow pass and put a bit of tape in line with the arrow pass. Yeah, it's 35. We gained, we gained a tiny bit, we were just under 23, we're now just over. So in fact that's, by the time that's settled, I think we could call that 24. A bit of exercise, it's not had a lot of exercise, has it? But if we call that, if we call that 35 at 24, I can do the arithmetic and work out how many pounds I've got to remove to get it to 35 at 28. So, 35 divided by 24, 1.458, etc. Pounds per inch times 28 would give 40.8. So I've only got to take five pounds off which experience has given me a feel for how much that is because quite a few times people have bought bows to me saying they want £10 taken off it so it's more than you might expect but it'll give me a chance to round it off a bit more this lower limb here is quite nicely rounded there uh, a little bit flat there very rounded at the tips of course but this upper limb, it's still got W for weak showing, which was where it was weak in the first place. And that's still very flat. So as I'm taking weight off, the inners and outers are getting rounded more. Uh, and that's staying flat. But gradually, that's beginning to get rounded a tiny bit more. But it, it only needs the corners taking off with a scraper and it, it, it'll stop it looking you know, just horribly flat. But to take five pounds off, you know, it'll take a fair bit off there, a fair bit off there, round it a little there. 
it's a lot more even now that um, on the last video I said the distance there was a lot more than the distance there well you can see that's not no longer true it's, it's much more even now so I've got the tiller pretty much right just a matter of shedding that last five pounds of draw weight but just the process of cleaning it up can take draw weight off yeah for the most part you can see there's a lot of tool marks on there still from the rasp and where I've chamfered the back but that gives you an idea you can still see you've got the skin uh, I'm not sure what you're, the rind I think it's a better word the rind or the bloom on the back of the bamboo that can come off scraper along these corners just taking out all the tool marks uh, in fact with five pounds in hand there's probably not a lot I'll probably just go to work with the scraper now cleaning it up I might even make a decent string shoot it a little bit or well, clean it up a bit make a string shoot it re-evaluate it, mess about with it, stick an arrow pass on it because it's for a left hander so I shall I shall have to see if I can work out how to shoot it left handed I'll just stick the top of it up through me chrono lamp now it's quite, it's quite fun trying to shoot left handed when you're right handed because you really have to think about the process you have to think about what do I actually do I've got to get this elbow, I've got to pull that back in line and, and the temptation is you end up out here so we think hang on I've got, I've got, how, how on earth do I get that into an anchor it, it feels really weird at first but once you start doing it it's quite good for well for body symmetry and gives you a better understanding of what you're doing and it's all good things to all people I think I'm blethering now aren't I